This is the Corune, a tiny split keyboard with a staggered layout. I've been using it for the past few months as my daily, doing everything I normally do on it, from work to gaming to editing the video you are watching now. The one seen in the beginning is the latest iteration of my build, fully wireless, powered by a small 110 mAh battery that reliably gives me a full week of battery life. The case I'm using now is a centered laser printed case. Before this, I was using a sandwich of laser cut acrylic plates, which is a much more accessible way of getting started with a build. You could go even simpler and use FR4 plates, which are made from the same material as the PCB and usually come in a kit. For the switches, I've settled on the super smooth Gateron CJ Palm, which I've modified slightly with a much lighter spring. The PCB I'm using has hot swap sockets, so changing switches is really easy. I won't go into too much detail as that's not really the scope of this video, but I will have a detailed list of all the parts in the description below. I would also like to name drop Void, who is responsible for all the soldering as well as the design of the custom case. But you're probably wondering what the point of it is, and how does one even get used to typing on such a strange layout? I admit that at first I wasn't convinced about the ergonomics, and I was attracted mostly out of curiosity and because I liked the looks. But now I find it hard to go back. The two halves are also very light and easy to move around on my desk, which I find myself doing quite often to suit my sitting position. One disadvantage is that once your muscle memory gets used to the staggered layout, and this may take a few weeks, it's pretty hard to go back to a regular keyboard. So if you're using multiple devices or travel with a laptop, you'll probably want to bring the Korune as well. You've probably also noticed the four ears sticking out from each of the halves. Those are called tenting holes. Instead of having the keyboard lying flat or at a preset angle, you can experiment with raising it in such a way that it complements your typing style. And if you get it right, it should also take some strain away from your wrist. However, customization doesn't stop there. Let's have a look over my own layout and the modifier keys that control the layers. The base layer, as you can see, is fairly normal, with a few personal quirks that I've developed in time, like the max style positioning of the control key. The layer controlled by the modifier key on the left is called the lower layer. This is normally where all your numbers and F keys would be, but I've customized this one quite a bit as well. My directional keys, for example, are overlaid on top of the WSD keys. The 1 to 5 keys on the left side are mostly there for a quick access in games, while on the right side I have what is essentially an emulated numpad. Let's have a look at the raise layer. In this layer I've customized a bit less than the other two, and there are still changes I will likely make here to better suit my needs in the future. Here we also find the Bluetooth controls, which are super easy to press when you least expect it, so yeah, I might change those as well in the future. But what about using the Korune for gaming? Well, it actually works very well, and since I've had it, I've played various types of games with no issues at all. That's not to say that it will work for everything, especially in some games that don't have key mapping, or ones that rely heavily on the number row. Still, nothing that couldn't be fixed by adapting the layout, or you could even have a special dedicated layout activated by a combination of key presses. For the mechanical keyboard purists out there, probably the biggest drawback of a Korune would be the typing sound, which will never be as satisfying as on a big heavy mechanical keyboard with a brass plate or a gasket mount. Personally, I focused on typing feel and smoothness, and couldn't be happier with the result. The typing test in the beginning of the video is a very accurate recording of what it sounds like in real life, but the sound signature can be changed quite a bit by using something like looped Gatorong ink blacks or whether the case sits tented or flat on the desk mat. Needless to say, I am definitely a fan of this little keyboard, and at least for the time being, I don't see myself switching to anything else. But what about you? What do you think of the Korune? Let me know in the comments below. That's it for this video, thanks for sticking until the end, and see you in the next one.